Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to see so many people here this Sunday morning. We come worshiping, we come celebrating many things, in fact. In the church here, we're celebrating Pentecost this Sunday where we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of all that God offers to the church and to God's people. We come celebrating the gifts of some of our people who have answered the call to become elders within our congregation, and we are doing that with them to the church session later in our service. And of course, we come this Sunday as part of the nation in celebration, and all of this we celebrate, giving thanks to God. And I think also I should say just now at the outset, thanks to all the people who make a Sunday like this happen, or so well set up and so decorative, and there's lots that's going to happen. So huge thank you to all the people, and you'll know better than me who you are for making this happen. I'm just looking at a predictor, which I don't really know what I've done to make that go away, um, but that's going to be an issue. There we are. Yeah, so that's good. <laughs> First pitch before coming. <laughs> Our style of worship this first Sunday of the month in Avalar Church tends to be this more informal style, seated around tables, able to share together, and, and, and a bit less traditional. You see, if you've got um, jugs of tea and coffee at the table, you can cut yourself throughout the service. It's a very informal service, and at points in the service, there'll be opportunities to turn to each other and chat and share and reflect together. And we do all of this, worshipping God and reflecting on the love that God has for us. There are some intimations, and normally I would do this later in the service, but I developed it before I forget anything else to highlight them just now. Um, and I say it before I forget anything else because one of them slipped off the organ of service. And uh, that's this one. And uh, on the 8th, which is Wednesday, we are, the Kirk session recently got some money, or got some grant money to explore developing the Glebe area, which is a parcel of land uh, that the church owns towards um, this direction, that direction, and uh, next to the Victoria Bridge, which we just facing away from the river, which is a great site and offers a lot of potential. And in particular, we're looking at developing it um, for ways for people mental health and well being within our community. So we're having an open evening to, to dream a bit about that and discuss what the options might be, um, community gardening, or maybe uh, community workshop, or maybe both, uh, and to dream together about what that might be. So that's this Wednesday here in the church um, from 7 The others are on your order service. I'll highlight as well, just as a time, the, the walking book, which is walking on Saturday coming, and um, Donald Francis information about that and there are also flyers that this week and Donald Peter, you're there. Donald needs to know by Thursday whether they're coming and that's partly because the walk that has been in Helen has a few different options and so depending on the group that comes, working out which of the best options, if you accept one, we'll allow Donald to take on the plan. All of that time, we will call our remedies. We come to worship God and we come um, with our call to worship, I'll say the words in the world. We can say together the words in the world. There are different gifts. There are different ways of serving God. God works through different people in different ways. Each one is given a gift by the Spirit. To use it for the common good. We come and worship and come together and begin our worship by singing together. If you're in the hymnals and at the back of your chairs, at hymn number 189, and words in the screen as well, we sing, Be still for the presence of the Lord.
as we begin our worship in prayer, we're going to do in a prayer part of the prayer in song. And Anne and I will have about to teach us some actions that we can do, some signs, bit of sign language that we can use as we're doing that song. So I'll invite Anne and I will have to explain the song. So we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God, one verse, and we've uh, researched some British sign language interpretation for two of the lines. So when we sing Spirit of the Living God, all of fresh on me, we're going to do the following sign. And that translates as God with me, so I'll just do that one more time.
Pentecost Sunday, when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit, we're going to hear and hopefully see on the video uh, something of Jesus telling the disciples about who this Holy Spirit is. Jesus calls the Holy Spirit the Helper who will come. If you want to follow along this word for you, and I think there are a good number of um, readings printed out as well, so you can follow along. Here's the prayer. I think we need to click on the side. Good to have balance and uh, elders. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. I will ask the Father, he will give you another. He will stay with you forever. He is the Spirit who reveals the truth about God. The world cannot receive him because it cannot see him on that way. But you know him because he remains with you and is in you. And a little while the world will see me no more. But you will see me. And because I live, you also will live. When that day comes, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me. Just as I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. My Father will love those who love me. I too will love them. And reveal myself to you. Judas. Not Judas Iscariot said, Lord, how can it be that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Those who love me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and my Father and I will come to them. Those who do not love me do not obey my teaching. And the teaching you have heard is not mine, but it comes from the Father who sent me. When I have told you this while I am still with you, the help of the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name will teach you everything and make you remember all that I have taught you. Peace is what I need of you. It is my own peace that I give you. I do not leave it as the world does. Do not be quite upset. Do not be afraid. Holy Spirit. Sometimes, at least for me, that can seem like the bit of faith, the bit of talking about God that seems a bit out there, maybe a wee bit spooky, a bit, a bit odd to tally with the world with which we know and that we live in. There's even a hymn in the hymn book of the Holy Spirit um, that asks, is it spooky? Is it weird? God speaks to us in his faith. But when Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit, Jesus talks about the Helper who will come, the one sent after him. And in John's Gospel that we've been following as a church for months now, the way that Jesus gives the Holy Spirit is after the resurrection and is through a story of Jesus breathing on the disciples. So we understand Jesus as a human who is God with us and the Spirit as a God who is with us not just in the time and place that Jesus lived but in all times and all places including right now. There's something about the idea of the Spirit as breath that I think is really interesting and important. The actual word spirit even shares its um, root from the Latin word spirare, and it gives us words like inspire or transpire, even if you're a wee bit hot, perspire. All of it's about breath and our spirit and breath being related. The breath of what sustains us in each moment at all times. I think the Spirit is that which calls us to our truest and best selves. And like a helper Jesus talks about, it gives us comfort and peace when we're struggling. Lots of people, I think, know that something that makes us feel more like who we really are. I'm driving today, and on the radio, because it was 
if you only say should go on your time, not go on to listen to Radio 1 on it. The radio was a DJ and was announcing a song and he said, this song sounds to me right. When you hit down in the night, feeling a bit great, how to filter burden of stress. And a friend comes along and just takes you out of yourself. It reminds you how to laugh. It reminds you who you really are. That way of feeding your soul. Which I talked to Eddie Beast about the evening program of Radio 1. And I had a deep way to talk about a song which didn't do any of that for me. But the way that DJ talked is something I think we can all relate to. And when you have that something that makes you feel like I think we can call that, that feeling, God's Holy Spirit and love. When Jesus talks about a helper that will come after him, I am sure that that feeling of being made good and whole in yourself is what Jesus is talking about. It says in the Bible that the Spirit blows with will like a wind. The Bible talks of the Spirit as a breath of life, uncontained, invisible, yet always with us at the core of our being. We'll talk a little bit about that more in a moment, but we're going to sing now of that spirit, unseen as a wind, to the tune of the Bible song, we say, Spirit of Unseen as a wind. Holding us always, the breath inside us. 
What catches the wind? Kites, actually. I'm aware that there are also celebrations and picnic parties happening in the various communities around the church as well. So if you want to make kites for your picnic this afternoon, then you can do that. So uh, Hilda and friends are going to be making kites up in the, to my mind, the, the back right corner, the back left corner, and how you do that. If you don't want to make a kite, go on over my head. Share together and reflect together on some of the thoughts that we're drawing, um, drawing on after our reading. And so that's time to pour yourself up and turn to your neighbour and say hi. I also want to discuss in two questions, and I'm inviting you to discuss. You won't get off topic, sure, but try and keep to these two questions. I think they're good to think about. And the first is, that feeling of feeling more like you, like your truest self, when someone comes along and helps you feel that way, or maybe do something that helps you feel that way. What are those things for you that make you feel full and fulfilled and like you are the real you and your truest self? And then this idea of Jesus sending the helper, the Holy Spirit, as a help. Are there times when you have known the guilt in your own life that you didn't necessarily expect? And then you can discuss, but also if you want to, just to reflect on yourself in the days ahead. When you think about your answers to those two questions, the things that make you feel like you, and the times that you've had help, what would it be to see those as times when the Lord was working? When God is with us in our normal day to day lives, in those things that fulfill our inner being and where we receive help from others. How does that change our understanding of ourselves and how we interact with the world to see those things as God is with us? And I'm going to invite you to guess 14 popping turns in the neighbor. We'll take uh, five or ten minutes of the questions and people can make kites as well. And then, I might that. And then Lindsay will eventually play music. When she does, you don't need to finish up your conversations instantly. We'll just come to an end.
Rebecca and me as elders, as leaders within our congregation in the Church of Scotland, and um, minister is definitely never in charge, and it's a meeting of the Kirk Session, a group of elders together who lead the congregation. We're going to sing, and we're going to sing a hymn that speaks to the calling all of us have, um, and we recognise the calling in the people who are in the next it's a new song, and I'm going to have a couple of words as we say. So we're going to sing a song called I Have Called You By Your Name. So what we'll do is, similar to how we did it last month, if I sing a phrase and then you sing it back just so we can learn the melody, and then once we've done that, we can sing it all together. So here's the first phrase.
giving to God for the gifts of God's people. We have the joys of using our gifts as the members of the Church of Christ, which is his body, continuing Jesus' ministry in the world today. Those who are chosen for the office of the eldership have a particular responsibility of caring for God's people and exercising oversight and leadership. Today the third section is met and will to ordain and to admit elders to its number. Due notice has been given. No objection has been made and we therefore proceed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and the Head of the Church, who being ascended on high has given gifts for the building up of the body of Christ, we are to ordain William Cannon, dear J. Cavalcanti, Claire Dukeson, Linda Grant, Orna Hutton, Ruth Kennedy, Margaret McKerrin and Lorna Shell to the office of the eldership, and to admit them together with Donald Pansy as elders within this congregation. In this act, the Church of Scotland, as part of the Holy Catholic or Universal Church, worshipping one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms and you its belief in the gospel of the sovereign grace and love of God, wherein through Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, incarnate, crucified and risen, he freely offers to all, upon repentance and faith, the forgiveness of sins, renewed by the Holy Spirit and eternal love, and calls us to labour in the fellowship of faith for the advancement of the kingdom of God throughout the world. The Church of Scotland acknowledges the word of God contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be the supreme rule of life and faith. The Church of Scotland holds as its subordinates under the Westminster Confession of Faith, recognising liberty of opinion on such points as do not enter into the substance of the faith, and claiming the right, in dependence upon the promised guidance of the Holy Spirit, to formulate, interpret, or modify its subordinate standards, always in agreement with the Word of God and the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith. All of this contains in the confession of which agreement the Church itself shall be the sole judge. In view of this declaration, you are now required to answer this question. Do you believe the fundamental doctrines of the Christian faith? Do you promise to seek the unity and peace of this church, to uphold its doctrine, its worship, its government and discipline, and to take your due part in the administration of its affairs. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you and enable you faithfully to keep this promise. Bless all. Loving God, you have chosen for yourself a church in which your Holy Spirit inspires people to serve your purposes of love. We give you thanks that by grace you have called these your servants, whom we have named before you, to lead and care for your people as elders in your church. We commend them now to you, as we ordain and admit them to the office of the eldership within the church of your dear son. Grant them the gift of your glory, that their hearts may be set on fire with love for you and for those committed to their care. 
make them pure in heart as those who have the mind of Christ. Give them vision to discern your purpose for the church and for the world you love. Keep them faithful to the end in all their service, that when the shepherd comes again, they may receive glory, the crown that never fades. Blessed be God for all God's goodness. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, giving the church the fullness of grace and making the church's words the word of life. The church is bread, the bread of heaven. And the church is shepherding to be that of the flock of God, God's own shepherd. To you, God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King and Head of the Church, I declare you to have been ordained and submitted to the office of the eldership in this congregation. I admit you to this office as members of the Kirk Session of this congregation and parish. In order to we might do something the church calls giving the right hand of fellowship, shaking hands. Maybe not the best time in all the world to do that. But shall we show our congratulations, our, our um, thanksgiving to God and our best wishes <coughs> to these people? So turn around and look.
we're going to pray now, and we're going to pray, and some of what we pray has the image of the kite uh, in and about it. So I'll get back this kite and we'll pray. is not always soaring and plain sailing. There are tangles and twists and turns along the way. Days when it feels like we can't get moving. Moments when it feels like we're falling. Times when it feels like everything is spiraling out of control. But in and through it all, you have promised us your ways, encouraging strengthening, empowering and lifting, always there and ready to share us. This weekend, in which our nation celebrates, and 70 years of the reign of Queen Elizabeth are marked, we remember how publicly she has lived out her faith in you, God of all. How she has spoken of and shown the encouragement and sustenance that her faith has brought her. We pray for our nation, celebrating those who contribute much to our society and praying too for those so often at margins, too easily pass over. We strive to commit ourselves to a brighter future for all. So Lord Jesus, we pray for those today who feel weak or weary, for those who are sad or scared, for those who lack peace within and around them, for those who are ill or confused or alone. We pray that through the power of your Spirit at work in the church and the world, you would come alongside them and breathe new life again, giving encouragement and strength and hope to all who are disheartened, so that they might know that in all the trials and twists and turns of life, even when everything feels out of control, you are the God who loves us and is with us always. This week, in Jesus' name, Amen. It is the, the Jubilee weekend, and I, I was surprised that I've been using flags amongst us all. Um, I think the music at the end of the service is going to be music uh, that was played at Queen Elizabeth's coronation 17 years ago. And the hymn that we're about to sing is also a tune that was played at that coronation. It's the tune from Hosts Unexplained Jupiter, and um, set to the hymn tune that said, and we come to sing our final hymn together. Let's sing, O Spirit, all in grace, and Counselor, all wise.
peace give you peace at all times and in all ways. The Lord go with you wherever the Spirit leads. And God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless you, preserve you, and keep you this day and forevermore.